Hi everyone and welcome to what is our final online family service, at least for now. And it's also going to be our final part in our series looking at the life of Joseph. So this week we're going to briefly recap um, Joseph's story so far and find out what happened at the end when he was reunited with his family. So let's just begin with an opening prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we can join together in this way to worship you. We pray that as we learn about the story of Joseph, that you will be with us and speak to us in our lives today. In Jesus' name, Amen. So we're going to have shortly our uh, first song, Count Your Blessings, and then we're going to get a, going to go straight into a video um, to see the story of Joseph. So first, here's our song, Count Your Blessings. Hall of Fame, Joseph. This is Joseph, hey. who was the son of Israel and Rachel. Ah. But he had 11 brothers who hated him ah. and sold him into slavery. Yeep. After being put in jail, Joseph told of the future of Egypt when he interpreted Pharaoh's dreams, and Joseph found favor with the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh made Joseph a leader in his kingdom. Just as Joseph had told the Pharaoh, Egypt had seven years of abundance. Then the seven years of abundance came to an end, and the seven years of famine began, hmm. just as Joseph had said. But the Egyptians had food to eat because Joseph had planned for the famine. There was famine in all the other lands, and many came to Joseph to buy food. There was even a famine in the land that Joseph came from. So when Israel heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent his sons to buy some. Yeah! But Israel did not send Benjamin with the others. Aww because he was afraid that harm might come to him. When Joseph's brothers came to him, Joseph recognized them, <laughs> but he pretended to be a stranger. Aha! So Joseph decided to test his brothers. <clears throat> he had his interpreter tell them to send for Benjamin, who had stayed home. Him. And then he threw his brothers in jail for three days. Aww. 
On the third day, Joseph let all but one of the brothers take grain to their starving households with the instruction to bring Benjamin back. But Joseph provided for his brother's journey and gave them grain and silver. The brothers did exactly as Joseph instructed, as they were scared that God was punishing them for what they had done to Joseph so many years before. They traveled home to their father's house, Yippee! then back to Egypt. Now that he had seen that they brought Benjamin, Joseph was overwhelmed, so he released the brother who was still in prison. But Joseph decided to play one more trick on his brothers. He sent the brothers away, but told his servant to hide his silver cup in Benjamin's bag. Then Joseph told the servant to go after the brothers and retrieve the cup. The brothers hadn't traveled far before the servant stopped them and accused them of stealing the cup. Aww. Aww. Joseph could no longer control himself before his attendants. He made them leave so he could be alone with his brothers, and he told his brothers who he really was. Ta-da! He told them of his life and all he had experienced, and he forgave them for what they had done. God was with Joseph and took care of him and showed him favor. So, in that video, we had a little recap of Joseph's story so far. And then we heard the final bit of the story, when Joseph's brothers came to Egypt for some food. And Joseph really wanted to test them a bit, to see if they had changed their ways, to see if they, had, they were sorry for what they'd done to him and the hurt that they had caused. And also to see if they were loyal to each other as brothers. In the end, though, Joseph was just so overwhelmed by emotion that he sent his stewards and servants out of the room and revealed to his brothers who he really was. He was so emotional and hugging and crying. What a day it was. A day of reunited brothers and a lot of emotion. And then what we didn't hear in the story is that Joseph then invited all his brothers and their wives and their children and of course Jacob, his father, to come and live with him in Egypt to make their home there. And it was a very happy family reunion. There is so much in this story of Joseph. But today I want to focus on that last part of the story. When Joseph showed incredible forgiveness to his brothers after all that they had done to him. And his great love for his family shone through and overwhelmed any feelings of anger or hate. This story, I think, reminds us of the importance of families, the importance of loved ones, of close friends, of those people who mean a lot to us. And there will inevitably be times when we argue and when we fall out with those who we are close to. Maybe not quite as bad as Joseph and his brothers who sold him into slavery, but maybe friends and family sometimes fall out very badly. But Joseph's story reminds us of the importance of forgiveness and of being reconciled. That's making friends again with those who we fall out with. And Joseph was able to do that, able to forgive his brothers um, and to be reconciled with them, partly because he could see the bigger picture. He could see how God had worked through all the bad things that had happened to him to bring about meaning and purpose and good things in his life. And so we saw in the story how he forgave his brothers and he got back the family who he'd been without for so many years. Our loved ones are important, friends and family. They're important to each of us. And we should all be working hard at our relationships 
looking after those relationships. There will be times in our lives when we need to forgive people, when we need to say sorry for the things we have done wrong, when we need to try that extra bit, try really hard to be loving and kind to people in order to help those relationships to flourish, in order to stay close to our loved ones, to friends and to family. And Joseph's story really reminds us of how important that is. So something for us to think about today then, about the importance of those who we are close to um, and how we need to look after those relationships, uh, work hard to forgive, to say sorry, um, go that extra mile to be kind and loving to those around us. So we're now going to have our next song and as we kind of came to a joyful part in Joseph's story, this song is all about us being joyful. craft today we're going to be making some little people all holding hands uh, as we think about um, how Joseph was reunited with his family uh, and about forgiveness and the importance of forgiveness uh, in each of our relationships so whether that's with friends or with brothers and sisters mums and dads whoever and the importance of having to work at those relationships so we're going to start off just with a piece of A4 paper. And what I've done is just folded an A4 sheet in half lengthways like this. And I've just uh, torn along here or you can cut along with scissors to give me um, 
half a bit of A4. And then what we're going to do is fold this sheet that you've got. So first of all fold it in half. And then fold it in half again. Not too um, firmly along the creases because what you're going to do is um, make sure that those creases then do a kind of zigzag. So uh, we don't want it uh, folded exactly in half and half again, but that gives us the creases so we know where they are. So uh, take the front bit like this, and you want to fold firmly along there, and then it's going to kind of concertina. So this one then goes that way, and the next one goes that way. Because what we want to be able to do is when we open it out, it'll be like this. Okay. So, on the front of your little bit of paper now, you're going to draw a person. Just do it with a uh, pencil. Um, I'm not going to decorate the person at the moment. The crucial thing when you draw your person is that you need the ends of their arms, so their hands, um, to touch the edges of the paper. So I will show you what I mean in just a sec. Just like this. So you can see that they don't really have hands, they meet the edge of the paper. And then quite simply, you're going to cut that person out. And what should happen is we should have four people because we're cutting through all the folds on our bit of paper the same shape. My person doesn't have much of a body, he's mostly arms and legs. You can probably do a better job. Okay. So there we have our little person and what you can do is carefully open him up or her up like so and then we've got four people now of course they don't really look much like people at the moment because they need to be decorated they need to be colored in let's do that so we can see what they're doing now with our story today we're thinking about um those people in our lives who are really important to us um, and sometimes when we're close to someone like a brother or sister or a good friend uh, we do argue we do fall out just like um, Joseph and his brothers um, argued and fell out and it's important that we work at those relationships so that we say sorry when we know that we need to um, that we really make an effort to um, be kind, to be loving to those people. And sometimes the people we're closest to, that's there that they can be the people it's hardest to be nice to, um, particularly if we've had an argument or fallen out with them. So what we're gonna do is um, on these, on our little people, we're going to draw ourselves, and then we're going to draw uh, three other people who we really love. So it might be mum or dad, it might be brothers or sisters, uh, good friends, maybe think about maybe friends at school or at nursery, um, people who you love and know that you need to make an effort um, to be kind to. So, so here is my finished uh, people, so here's me, the end. Uh, and I'm next to uh, Matt, who is my husband. Uh, this is my good friend, one of my good friends, Alice. And this is my little girl, Elizabeth. So all people who I'm close to. Um, so I wonder who you will draw, who people you might be close to. And remember that just like Joseph uh, with his family, sometimes things go wrong, sometimes things uh, we fall out with those who we cl we're close to and those who we love. But um, just like Joseph and his brothers, 
um, had the opportunity to make up and to become good friends and a family once more, it's important that we take any opportunity we have to um, make up those relationships, to become friends with people again, um, to forgive um, and to be forgiven and uh, to be kind to people so that we can um, stay really good friends with them. So do post on Facebook if you can your pictures uh, and your people that you make. And so we come now to our prayers. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for our loved ones. And thank you for close friends and family. And we pray for those who we are close to. Especially we pray for those times when we argue with them, when we bicker and fall out. Help all of us to have the strength to say sorry and to forgive. We pray, God, for your blessing upon all our relationships. We thank you for Joseph's example and for his story, which we have been learning about. We thank you for how you worked in his life for good, despite all the hard things he went through. And we pray that that may be an encouragement to each of us. God, be with anyone who is suffering at this time, those who are poorly, those who are sad. And in a moment of quiet, we pray to God anything else that's on our mind today. In Jesus' name, Amen. And we pray together the Lord's Prayer on your screen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're going to have our final song now, which is Our God is a Great Big God. Our God is a great big God.
That brings us to the end of our service for today. And this was our final online service, uh, but we will meet next week in the Cornerstone um, at the altered time of half past 11. Uh, so do join me next week, half past 11 in the Cornerstone for our family service. Please note though, if you'd like to come along, then it's essential that you book online uh, because numbers will be limited due to social distancing. So you must book online if you'd like to come along next Sunday. So if you'd like to do that, then please have a look at our church website uh, or our Facebook page for more information. Uh, or if you've got any uh, problems, um, then just write on the Facebook page or uh, write on the YouTube comments uh, if you want to find out any more about how to do that. But otherwise, see our website or our Facebook page for more information about next Sunday. And I hope to see you then, half past 11. God bless, have a good week and see you soon.